So rabbits breed like rabbits. If you start with two, pretty soon you'll have four and then eight and then 16 and 32 and so on. It's gonna end up looking like an exponential equation like this and you're used to this. As a differential equation, it looks like this. The rate at which the population is changing with respect to time is equal to some growth factor times the population. And when you create just the population equation, get something like this. Population is equal to the initial population times e to the kt, where k is that growth factor there. All this is nonsense. Because yes, rabbits breed like rabbits, but they also live in a place. And that place has constraints. There's only so much grass to eat, which means that the population of rabbits can't go up forever. It has to plateau at some point unless every single square inch of the earth is covered in rabbits. That's why we have something different, the logistic function. A logistic model of population growth, this is what it tends to look like. The rabbits start to grow and they start to grow faster and faster and faster and faster and faster and then they start to run out of resources, run out of resources, run out of resources and they reach some limiting asymptote. They get closer and closer and closer to their maximum population and they never quite get to their maximum population, they just get closer and closer and closer to it. This is a pretty good model of population growth. So a little bit of theory here, here is our logistic differential equation. The rate at which the population changes with respect to time is equal to r times p bracket 1 minus p over k. Now in this model, 0 is less than p, which is less than k. To write, write it the other way, k is larger than p, and p is obviously larger than 0 because p is the population. And we also need to know what r and k are. r is our growth parameter, and it really determines how fast this growth is going to take place. And k is our carrying capacity how much the environment can take before we get to a limit. In terms of our curve here, this value right here is k. That's how much the environment can bear before it starts to level out. Jumping into an example, some population is measured using this differential equation. Uh, this is our uh, growth parameter, p1 minus p over 1000. 1000 is our carrying capacity. And obviously the population has between 0 and 1,000, the carrying capacity, can't go over that. Um, now, I'm also going to give you some additional information here. We need some, like, in initial population. So, at time 0, the population is equal to 20. And our first part of our question here is, find the population at time t. And I'm going to do that by solving that differential equation. Now, I've just rewritten it down here. Um, with a slight difference here, you can see that 1 minus p over 1,000 is the same as 1,000 minus p over 1,000. Now this 0 0.025 is kind of getting in the way here. If I were to take this fraction and multiply it by 0 0.025, that's the same as dividing it by 1 over 0 0.025, and that's going to give me a 40,000 here down the bottom. So we have this neat little thing, p times 1,000 minus p over 40,000. Now we can rewrite this just slightly differently. We can rewrite it as p times 1,000 minus p, and all of that over 40,000. That's exactly the same thing. Now, I've got to flip this differential equation, dt dp. Because doing so is going to allow me to solve this for t. And you're going to end up in a place that looks like this. t is the integral of that with respect to p. Now, you've got to do some partial fraction stuff here. There's too much other stuff to do, so I'm not going to go through partial fractions. But when you do, you get the integral of 40 over p plus 40 over 1000 minus p, like that. Now we can take a common factor of 40 out here. And when we do that, we get two terms both of which we can integrate pretty easily. So this is it here. Now that 40 was out the front, so the 40 multiplying by all of this. ln p is the integral of that, and minus ln 1000 minus p is the integral of this part here. Now, you can see I've kind of done some absolute values here, but they're really not necessary because p is between 0 and 1000, and that is always going to be positive, 0 and 1000, and this is also always going to be positive because the largest value p can be is a thousand or of course smaller than a thousand. So these aren't absolute values, these are brackets. All right, now looking here, we can rewrite this using our log laws. So we have an equation for t here, 
t equals all of this. Um, but we can go a little bit better here because now we can rewrite this uh, p equals something rather than t equals something. Now solving this style of uh, differential equation you've done before, I've done all of this stuff in pink here. You can see that I'm rearranging with the c over here, moving the 40, dividing by, and then we get this e to the negative c on 40 here, which we then let equal a. So we get to this point here. Now the whole purpose of this video is not showing you that, so I'm just going to get rid of all of this stuff and just get this solution. So if you need to copy all that down, copy it all down now. So now that we have an equation that looks like this, it'll be very useful to know what a was. And luckily we have an initial condition, t equals 0 and p equals 20. So when we put those into this equation for t and p, we can solve for a. And that's really trivial algebra, so I'm not going to show you how to do it. But when t equals 0, p equals 20, and a equals 1 on 49, just by putting those two values into our equation. So now that we have 1 over 49, e to the t on 40 equals p over 1000 minus p, we can rearrange this for p. Now doing so obviously takes quite a few lines here, but what you get is p equals this equation here, 1000 e to the t on 40 over 49 plus e to the t on 40. And you can see me jumping through some steps here. It's all rudimentary algebra. We're just rearranging, factorizing, etc., etc. Um, we've done it. This is it. This is the end. Find p at time t. p at time t is 1000 e to the t on 40 over 49 plus e to the t on 40. Now, this equation here, p equals this, 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 it's going to be one of those logistic curves that we spoke about earlier. Um, and now that we know that, we can plug in a value for p, because this is our population here, and this is our time here. We can plug in a value for p here and find out what time it is. When will the population be 500? We can also plug in a time three, seven, nine, whatever, and find out what the population is at that given time. So those questions I just described are really easy, sub p, sub t, and find the other one. But here's a tricky question that might throw you, and it's the sort of question you might get asked. When will maximum population growth occur? Okay, so look, this is our graph of um, time versus population. Maximum population growth is occurring here at this inflection point. And we want to find out when is that inflection point. Now, the inflection point is when your rate of change, this is the rate of change right here, is at a maximum. Okay, the rate at which it's, occur it's steepest is here. Now, if you want to find maximums of functions, maximums of rates of change, you need to find the turning point and to find the turning point, you find the derivative and you let the derivative equal zero. So finding the derivative of that rate of change is relatively straightforward. And here it is here. Now the derivative of the derivative is the second derivative. And this is just a, a quadratic. So I've expanded that, I've expanded that, and then I've derived both terms. 0 0.025 minus 0 0.05p over 1000 is the derivative of that. Okay, and then we just let the derivative equal zero. Let, and in this case, it's the second derivative, but we're trying to find the turning point of the first derivative, so that makes sense. Uh, if we let that equal zero and solve it, now I'm not going to do it here, but zero equals this, therefore p equals 500. That means that when the population is equal to 500, that's when the maximum population growth will occur. But that's not a time. It says when will the maximum population growth occur. So if we want to know that, we can take that p equals 500, sub it in to here, and solve for t. And that'll give us the time at which it occurs. I'm not going to do that here, but it is relatively straightforward. Put the 500 in here and find out what time it happens. All right, that's the logistic differential equation. You can see there's a lot there. I've had to rub things off the board and do things here, but it's the culmination of quite a few skills that you've learned over the course of this unit.